Hi, I'm Dan Ligani with Silver Solutions, the senior-focused home services company. Welcome to AgeWise, the show where we try to help make you smarter about all the things you and your loved ones will need to know as you grow older. Today, we dig into home care with a company founder by the name of Ron Gold. His company, Lean on We, is a fascinating story. Ron Gold, thanks so much for joining us. It's great to be here, Dan. Thanks. Ron, you spent much of your life as an investment banker, and then 10 years ago on Thanksgiving of 2011, all of that changed. Take us back and tell us what happened. I was at Lehman, and then I was at Barclays after that. And then 10 years ago, it's actually 10 years ago this weekend, uh, it's the 10th anniversary of my accident. I, I was an avid cyclist. I would ride regularly on weekends with a group of friends. I live in northern New Jersey in Bergen County. We'd ride up to Harriman State Park uh, in upstate New York. It's about a 50, 60 mile ride away. We were almost done on this particular day. It was Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend. It was unseasonably warm. And all of a sudden, an out of control SUV comes barreling at us. The driver crosses a solid yellow line, hits my buddy Zach, and then me without braking. It was 1.06 p.m. and it was bright and sunny and somehow she had fallen fast asleep. My injuries were, were profound. Uh, uh, I, was, I had incredible orthopedic injuries. Uh, they had to take out my spleen. Uh, my spine was crushed. I'm now a paraplegic. And at that point, I was in danger of bleeding out. So the trauma surgeons didn't expect me to survive. What was the most difficult part of the early days? And when did you become aware of the deficiency in the home health universe? My strongest memory of that time is going to see the neurosurgeon and him telling me, you'll never walk again. He had to tell me two or three times before I could process this. I mean, who can process something, something like that? I mean, I was, I was healthy. I was strong. I was doing everything I wanted to do. I had done nothing wrong. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, something like this happens. Uh, and... After I was discharged, I came home. So now five months later, I'm at my home and it's, it's a foreign home to me. I had nurses, I had caregivers, I had therapists. I had this constant um, antibiotic drip, a pick line for months and months uh, to try to get rid of the infection. And I could barely move on my own. And uh, it was... I, I was always an upbeat person, a positive persona, can do, and yet here, here I was, I was feeling really, really sorry for myself. Um, I was sitting around in my room and uh, I had no aspiration to do much. And these, <laughs> these why me's were, were frequent. And finally, my wife said to me, why not you? Uh, bad stuff happens. And it was a bit of a wake up call because she, she said it with, with all the love that was intended, knowing that I needed uh, a bit of a smack on the face. I'm sure that's a profound thought process that repeated over and over again. At what point did you make the connection though between what you were going through with your own in-home caregivers and there were gaps and i want to hear what you discovered the gaps were to then start to think i can solve this and this is what i'm going to be doing next well i had i had been looking to do something other than wall street anyway and um this gave me the option to say hey um, I have a little bit of a clean slate here in terms of what I'm going to do with my next step. And I had, I had always wanted to uh, be a bit of an entrepreneur. And I thought about the frustrations my wife and I were experiencing uh, with our home care. I'm, the first shock was that home care is not covered by health insurance. Now, I, I thought that I had this good private health insurance from Barclays and they were going to cover my my home care indefinitely. And then I found out that it doesn't matter whether you have that private health insurance or you're on Medicare, you're only going to be covered for uh, a few hours a day for a few weeks, period. 
And, and then what? You sort of have to figure it out on your own and pay for it on your own. And in the case of the company you started, which is called Lean on We, you created something in the middle. Talk to us about the specific services that you provide and, and, and how they're different and designed to fill the gaps that you felt personally. Sure. So again, it, it comes from what I saw going on generally in the market. And I said, well, why can't we have some kind of um, online system with, with, with real people helping to, to bring the two sides of, of the market together? You have home care providers who are looking for work and they really want private hire work because they can earn more money that way. And families are looking for caregivers and they want to have a choice and they want to find someone who's the right fit. So we figured if we could go meet caregivers, vet them, verify their references, verify their licenses, shoot a video, create a profile, take a fingerprint, send it to the FBI and create online profiles on a website, then we would, we would be providing all this information. So people could have real choice on, on who they want to bring into their home. When you look at your process of really vetting and doing deep background checks on the caregivers that you provide, that's a, that's a wonderful service. What else is different about your company? Are you employing the caregiver? Is the family employing the caregiver? Give us a little more insight into that. Sure. So that's the biggest difference. Uh, uh, those, uh, you know, we are not employing the caregiver. When you use a home care agency, it's a simpler process. You go to them, they employ the caregiver, send him or her out to you. What we do is we are a way for the two sides to come together. And then um, the family member is the employer. And uh, we, can, we can easily set you up with a domestic payroll partner that we have. Uh, we use HomePay, which is part of Care.com, and, and we've had a great experience with them. Uh, or you can use another payroll company if you so choose. But we're there giving you all the resources so you can do it yourself. And, and by doing it that way, you, you pay less money, even as the caregiver earns more money. So those are two very strong positives of doing it this way. What are the typical expenses someone should be thinking about for quality care? The way I think about it after being in this, in this home care world is that people should be buying long-term care insurance. They should be buying uh, a hybrid life insurance, something to provide for this, this future because A, home care is not covered by insurance. That's the first misperception. They say that two thirds of Americans expect that their long-term care needs will be covered by Medicare. Whoa. Well, it's no wonder people don't go out in the market and buy private uh, long-term care insurance because they think the government's gonna pick up the cost. So th that, that's indeed the first thing. I mean, if you need, if, I mean, we think, we find that per hour, generally people will pay somewhere in the 20 to 25 dollars an hour and we know that a home care agency generally is now 30 dollars and up in, in our area and um one of the things that we do which we which we find is uh, a cost savings for people is we we strongly recommend living care uh where you know maybe maybe the cost there around 250 dollars a day uh but on a per hour basis, it, earns, it comes out to be much less. And that's an, and that's an area where our, our offering is particularly compelling relative to the other option. What does live-in care actually look like? And because if somebody's in your home, are they there seven days a week? Are they there five days a week? And clearly they need some time off. So what does that actually look like in terms of the number of days and number of hours that you're, you're, you're getting help from someone? Well, it depends. It could be five, de five days, could be seven days. Generally, I mean, if you need live-in, you, you probably need somebody there all the time. What's the part of the last seven years that you feel like you've made the most progress? And where do you think that as a country, we still have the biggest gaps in home care that need to be addressed in the coming years? What I think is that 
on a federal level, we should come up with a scaled down, bare bones way for domestic employees to be paid legally, but without the whole rigmarole, rigor, without the whole rigmarole and effort that is involved in doing that. And um, that would that would make perfect sense to me. That's sort of one example. You said at the outset. It was 10 years ago, almost to this weekend, that your life changed. And, and the, the positive that you were able to take out of a very profound change was the building of Lean On We. But we talked a, a little bit earlier before we came on the air. It, you're, you're doing some uh, other interesting things on the side. Talk to us about your motivational speaking process that you're doing. Sure. Um, I delve into to that experience I had when, when, when I thought of this, why me and not why you? And that we think that that's a that's a really a profound and an important experience because everybody's got stuff. Everybody's got curveballs they're dealing with. Look, for most people, it's nothing like what I've experienced, and that's great. And and I hope that for everyone. But everybody has to sort of reexamine, reignite, and remotivate themselves to move forward because that's our experience. And and. Life is nothing but change. I've been able to take solace and um, and take gratitude and experience what I have and still focus on what I can still do. There are many things I can't do, but there are still so many things that I can do. I can start a business. I can motivate people. I can inspire people. I can still do sports. I went and I, I rode in the head of the Charles, which was a big goal of mine. And I have plenty more goals that I'm going to try to accomplish to the best of my ability. We all have limitations. We all can't do things the same way we, we used to do. But that doesn't mean we give up. We have to keep moving on. And there are so many ways that we can be involved in the conversation and the discussion and, and really make the world a better place. And I don't mean that as hyperbole, just improve it a little bit that we all can. And if I can help people do that, and I, and I can see that I've had that experience, then I want to take advantage of it. Ron, before we go, tell us how people can find out more about Lean on We or get in touch with you. Sure. The easiest way is to go to our website, leanonwe.com, or you can call us 844-532-532. 6669 or go to social media you can find me on on twitter on facebook on linkedin wherever it is and i also wanted to mention my my personal website uh for my uh, motivational speaking and that's uh rongold.live ron gold the founder of lean on we the new york metro home care company trying to do things a little bit differently Thanks so much for joining us today and for making us a lot smarter about finding great in-home health. If you like this episode of AgeWise, please share it with a friend, post it on your social media site. And if you want to hear back episodes of AgeWise, just go to silversolutions.com, click on the video tab, and you'll see all of our episodes. You can also subscribe by going to Apple Podcasts and clicking subscribe when you search for AgeWise. I'm Dan Lagani. For all of us here at Silver Solutions who work hard every day to help make growing older safer and easier, stay safe and be wise. <laughs>